the race is on to develop a vaccine for the world's newest epidemic, the Zika virus. The question is how quickly researchers will be able to develop a tool to fight it. Reporters Betsy McKay and Peter Loftus wrote about this in today's Wall Street Journal, and Peter Loftus joins us now to discuss. Welcome, Peter. The urgency to develop a vaccine comes as the Zika virus is linked to that devastating birth defect called microcephaly appears to be quite strong. Was a vaccine for this virus on the radar even a year ago? Uh, even a year ago, it wasn't on many people's radar. Uh, at that time, uh, the, the Zika virus was known. Uh, it's been known for about seven decades. But before last year, it was really thought to be a low-level threat because the link between the virus and this birth defect uh, and, and a couple of other um, uh, adverse outcomes uh, wasn't really known. Mm. And so um, it's really just been since that uh, risk became apparent that there's been a lot more uh, interest in actually finding a vaccine for this virus. Okay, so now the race is on. How many organizations are involved in the process of developing a vaccine for Zika? There's about 15. This includes um, private companies, uh, government agencies, and other uh, private research institutes and, and, and nonprofits. But they're not too far ahead, are they? Optimistically, how long until there's a vaccine or a treatment that could be tested? I think that the, the, the current thinking is that um, it, it might not be until the end of next year before you could really start big um, clinical trials in the field, uh, in, in places like Brazil and other parts of Latin America uh, where the risk is highest mm -hmm. to actually test whether uh, a vaccine would be uh, effective. So are they starting from scratch or can researchers link this virus to other similar viruses? Um, well, a little bit of both. I mean, in the sense that this wasn't on a lot of people's radars uh, a year ago, um, that sort of puts um, the response a little bit behind um, what might have been ideal. But um, because this virus is actually, it's in the same family as other viruses that are that are known and for which there's, there has been a lot of research like uh, dengue, um, and there's, there's, there's a dengue vaccine. And so uh, some people think that you could sort of harness that past research on other viruses uh, and, and put it uh, quickly to use in trying to come up with something against Zika. Now, it's interesting because the race to develop treatment for this virus recalls the recent global fight to combat Ebola, which, you know, Ebola died out before there were the clear vaccines. Is, is part of the problem for health officials that epidemics move faster than institutions, or is there a financial component here that there's just not a lot of money in this? Yeah, I think it's both um, because you know some of these uh, some of these viruses, these outbreaks are they're they're just so unpredictable and and sporadic. And so you might, with the case of Ebola, you know we've known about that since the 70s. There were some outbreaks uh, over time, but until 2014, when we had the biggest and deadliest outbreak in history, there really wasn't. Um, there, there really wasn't a way to know when the next outbreak was going to be and, and just what the model would be for how uh, a company, for instance, might be, um, you know, compensated and, and rewarded for developing a vaccine because you just never know when, when the next epidemic is going to come. Absolutely. Now, in this case, what's the best case scenario? Who seems to be the furthest along with a vaccine? Uh, sure. Well, there's a, there's a couple... Um, possibilities. Uh, the National Institutes of Health uh, has some vaccine candidates uh, uh, that, that, you know, that where the, the, the time turnaround could be relatively quick. Uh, there's a company in, in India. There's, a, there's another company in the U.S. called Inovio that have um, vaccine candidates and, and they've, they've done animal testing. And so now the next step is just to get those into humans, and, and I think some people think that could be by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. um, that, but it's still, to, to actually go through the required um, clinical testing, that, that's probably something that's more like a couple of years away. Oh, that's too bad. It can't come soon enough. All right, Peter Loftus, thank you so much for that. Thanks for having me.